Hello, my friends. Hello, and welcome once again to Stately Vaughn Manor, where it's Wednesday. That means it's Epic Comic Book Wednesday. Every Wednesday, I'll talk about a certain comic book, graphic novel, or comic book subject. Steve Donahue on his channel will talk about the same comic book, graphic novel, or comic book subject. It is our world's finest team-up that we do once a week. And this week, Roger and I have a hot, steaming, terrible mess of a comic. Which is appropriate for this month, because this month, if you follow BookTube, on BookTube there is an event going on, a reading event called Garbogast, created by Criminali, which is all about celebrating trashy literature. Trashy books. Mostly fun trashy books. But in this case, I'm talking about a comic that is just trash. I'm talking about the Heroes Reborn version of Captain America. So, in the 1990s, Marvel was having a hard time. Some of their major creators had left the company because they were sick and tired of dealing with Marvel's crap. And so these big-time comic book writers and artists all left, and they went and formed Image Comics, which went and made a ton of dough. And they, and they, should, they deserved it, you know? They should have left Marvel if they were being treated badly, and they did. And they went and created their own comics, that were creator-owned, and it was a big deal, and remains a big deal. It's a pretty big deal in the history of comics, the forming of Image Comics. But Marvel was left high and dry and not knowing how to do, not knowing how to create good comic books. You get the real sense in the 90s, or I did in the 90s, that Marvel just had no idea what they were doing, and they had no idea how to make their comic books sell, they didn't understand at this period their own characters or what made their characters sell. They just didn't get their own characters at this time. And for a long time, Thor, Iron Man, the Hulk, all of the Avengers, the Fantastic Four, and even Captain America were not, had, were, had not been selling well. Now on Captain America, the, ironically, this had changed. And they had hired starting in 1995, Mark Wade to, to write Captain America, and they got Ron Gardney, Ron Gardney to draw Captain America. And that magnificent run is collected in this epic collection. This is Man Without a Country, which is the Captain America epic collection, volume 22, which has stories from 95 to 96, right before the Heroes Reborn disaster. And this comic was great. I was picking this up when it came out. I was a big Captain America fan. And I was waiting for a Captain America run like this, man. And it was fantastic. The stories were excellent. The artwork was great. Uh, a ton of action. A lot of stuff going on in this comic book. And most important of all, Mark Wade understood Captain America. He knew this character and he knew how to how to write this character, which was what Marvel needed. It just didn't know that it needed it. I think this was kind of a fluke. But what they needed was to hire some writers who were good writers and understood the characters that they were writing about and, were, and just wrote good stories about those characters in character. But at the time, Thor was terrible. Iron Man was really terrible. I mean, they turned Iron Man into this homicidal maniac, and then they replaced Iron Man with a younger teenage version of himself. It was embarrassing. It was an embarrassing thing. The Avengers kind of sucked, or really sucked. But Captain America was good. But Marvel Comics in the mid-90s realized, hey, we don't know how to do a good comic book anymore. So what they did is they went to those guys who left who left their company and offered them a ton of money to, to, to draw their heroes, to draw their characters. So basically they farmed out their own characters to these image creators, a couple of them anyway. Uh, and, and one of those guys, unfortunately, was Rob Liefeld. And we got this terrible comic book. <laughs> Captain America, this is the Heroes Reborn Captain America, because... All the all the all these superheroes that I've just mentioned were taken out of the official Marvel universe and put into a new universe of their own 
which was basically like a weird image version of Marvel, but not as good. So it was it was a strange time, and it was it was a desperate act on the part of Marvel, I think, and a huge mistake with this particular comic because, like I said, this was really good. It was generating great word of mouth. It was starting to sell really well again. People loved this. And if you were a Captain America fan, you really loved this. But all of a sudden, this was taken away. It was taken away. And we got this instead. So we got this stupid version of Captain America who doesn't even have an A on his forehead. He has that weird eagle thing. And here's the problem with this. There are a couple problems. First of all, it was given to, given to Rob Liefeld, who... He does have his strengths as an artist. He has a lot of energy. Um, does he have... Roger, what are some of Rob Liefeld's strengths? Does he... I mean, people love this. There were people that loved this guy. I mean, he's he sold a lot of comics, this guy. There must have been a reason. Damn, I can't figure out what it was, though, because this guy could not draw very well. So... As an artist, this is just my opinion, and like a gazillion other people's opinions, that this guy, he had his problems as an artist, let's just say. Let's just say his anatomy was terrible. He was really bad at drawing human beings, or as far as I can tell, anything else. Um, he was, when you look at this, all you can think of is that this is amateur work. But he was... But he was big time, and he did sell a gazillion comics. I mean, this guy was popular. It's inexplicable, but it was true. A lot of people love this guy's work. But it was terrible. And so what happened, all his terribleness, like everything that he did badly, really showed up in this comic book. Like it was just, especially if you've been reading Captain America and you compared this to this, man, it was like night and day. And it's not just the artwork that was terrible, which is surprising to me because Jeff Loeb wrote this, who has written some good stuff. So why did he write such a terrible comic book? Because it's not just the art that's bad. Everything is bad about this comic book. So this was the first issue. Now, I do not have a collected edition of this because even I'm not that insane. Although... Eventually, this is probably going to be collected in an epic collection, and because I collect epic collections, I'm going to have to get that. I, pr I probably will get it just to add, just so my collection is complete. Although, it would be a really stupid thing to do, because this is just terrible. So, and everything you need to know about how bad this is, you can see it just by opening the first page and opening the cover and looking at this Terrible, terrible first page. This first page could go down in history as one of the worst comic book first pages of a, of a run ever. So this is supposed to, you would never know from looking at this, but this is supposed to take place in World War II. You have tanks and planes and Captain America looking on some World War II combat, only it doesn't look like it. First of all, they gave Liefeld a ton of money for this. A ton. You'd think he would be able to spend a little bit of that money or at least go to the library for free and get something that'll show you what things in World War II actually looked like. What are these? These are supposed to be fighter planes in World War II. What fighter planes in World War II looked like this? None of them did. He didn't even bother to try to draw a plane that looked like a, any kind of World War II fighter plane. Like any kind at all. He just sat there, oh, planes from World War II, I'll just draw that. He didn't even look at anything, I guarantee it. He didn't look at a damn bit of reference. He just drew these little planes. And tanks, you know, you've got these tanks, which, you know, at least they are recognizable as tanks. And we've got our soldiers here in uniforms that clearly are not World War II uniforms. I don't know what they are, but he does not know what anything in World War II looked like. It's obvious. 
He also has, has some other problems. For example, this is a tank in the foreground here. We have a little guy standing next to the tank or, or walking next to the tank. Now this is clearly in front. This scene is clearly in front of Captain America. So is Captain America a giant? Is he 20 feet tall? Look at this little guy. Look at giant Captain America behind him and the tank. He towers over everything. He look. It could just be a giant Captain America statue. This is all wrong. Everything about this first page is wrong. And it just continues to be wrong. Here is our mutant looking Captain America. This is Liefeld's version of Captain America. This is a flashback or a dream because this peculiar looking thing is Steve Rogers. This is what Steve Rogers looks like in this comic book. In fact, this is what everybody, <laughs> most people look like this in this comic book. I guess this was just a Liefeld thing. So Captain America in this comic book is just, he, Steve Rogers is some guy that doesn't know he's Captain America. He has a son, he has a wife, Everything is really badly drawn. All the women look like mannequins in this comic. He stumbles across an old man who recognizes Captain America, the old guy with the demon eyes there. Why does he have demon eyes? I don't know. Now, Life, like I said, can't draw anything. And he has a lot of overhead shots, which are a lot like this. This is a table and a bench. All he did was draw some straight lines and had some people there. I mean, it just, everything's bad in this comic. I mean, the perspective is bad. What is Captain America doing here? I don't know, but this is a, he's, he's, I hate this version of Captain America. We do get a new Bucky. We get a new Bucky in this series as well, because that's what we needed. We needed a new teenage sidekick. We have a villain in this first issue, which is Master Man. He's a super Nazi guy. There's Master Man. And Master Man is a far-right guy who's using far, his far-right political hate speech to sucker a bunch of, you know, uh, to sucker a bunch of super conservative Americans into his own racist way of thinking. Here is when he goes down some stairs. Now these stairs are just lines. Liefeld just drew lines. And so he's basically walking down some lines. Liefeld doesn't know how to draw stairs. He doesn't know how to draw much. So we have him go down stairs. He goes out and he gives this speech in front of a swastika wearing his Nazi outfit. Because, you know, why be on the down low? Why be subtle? Let's just, you know, I'm a big Nazi. But then he says, no, some of you are looking at the swastika behind me, or you've heard in the media that the World Party, that's his party, is another name for the Nazi parties. Well, the Nazis lost, and we're not losers. That swastika is a symbol of our unity. So anyway, we have a spy that's walking up these badly drawn stairs and he stumbles across these things. What are those things? No, they're not what you're thinking. They're actually nuclear missiles because Master Man has a bunch of nuclear missiles stashed here. <sighs> Eventually, this old guy with the demon eyes runs into Captain America, says, hey, I know you, don't, you don't remember me, but come home to my creepy house and I'll give you this shield. And then suddenly, suddenly you will remember you will remember your Captain America. And then they get attacked by some bad guys. And Captain America has his shield. Look, it's Captain America. This is the Captain America centerfold. And there he is, standing as a big stiff figure, Captain America. He's going to fight these guys. He does. He still can't remember things all that well, though. But, you know, he gets in a fight. Now, at the end of the comic, Old Demon Eyes passes away. It's very sad. Captain America gets really angry and puts on his really thick eyeliner, you know, and he's going to, you know, get justice. It turns out Captain America was 
put into this state kind of a, of hypnosis or whatever where he has amnesia and can't remember that he was Captain America and he was put in this state by you guessed it shield and this super buff version of Nick Fury and we've got this very tall mannequin looking person is Sharon Carter and this is dumb dumb Dugan this roly-poly fat guy but don't worry he doesn't stay roly-poly for very long the issue after this one I think he literally becomes super buffed like they just forgot Leifold forgot he was a fat guy and just the next time he drew him he drew him as a buffed guy because you know he just couldn't remember what he had done two issues ago. I mean, this is a, this is a terrible comic book. I won't go too much farther into it because it remains this terrible, but Captain America runs home to his wife and child, discovers that they not only look like mannequins, they actually are. They're actually life model decoys. And Steve Rogers was just too dumb to figure it out. He was just too dumb. His kids, his kid is also a life model decoy, but Steve Rogers, too dumb, too dumb to figure out he'd been living with life model decoys all this time until super buffed Nick Fury shows up and says, hey, I could put you back to sleep and you can live this zombie existence you've been living in since World War II. By the way, in this version of Captain America, he doesn't get any older because of his super serum, his super serum that's running through his veins. Keeps him young and stupid, apparently. So in, in this version of Captain America, he didn't, you know, go into suspended animation in a big hunk of ice like he did in the original version of Captain America. In this one, he was going to speak out against the use of the atomic bomb in World War II, and we can't have that. So Nick Fury, who recently formed S.H.I.E.L.D., decided to basically brainwash Captain America and give him amnesia and have him live with robots for decades. And, and occasionally use Captain America to go to a war, to go to different wars and kill people. And then he was basically like an earlier version of Winter Soldier. But now he's woken up and he decides, well, I guess I'll work for you, Nick Fury, even though you did this horrible thing to me. Um, so this was terrible. It was clearly terrible. The artwork was terrible. All the artwork in this comic is terrible. Um, I might have mentioned that once or twice. But this comic, this comic was really bad. And Marvel realized this to their credit. Marvel did realize it because it got a bunch of really nasty letters saying, hey, we had a great creative team on Captain America and you took it away and this is what you give us? This weird Captain America with an eagle on his head? You know, and that didn't last actually. I think it only lasted a few issues. I don't have the sixth issue here, but it lasted a few issues and a, this lasted six issues actually with Lee, Liefeld. And Marvel was like, let's pull the plug on this. Let's pull the plug on this disaster. But they still had a few issues to do in the Heroes Reborn universe before they could bring everybody back. So they took Liefeld off mercifully. They took the eagle off Captain America's head, put the A back on it, kind of finished out whatever kind of storyline was, that was going on on this comic at the time, brought all the heroes back, to the regular Marvel Universe. And thankfully the story has a happy ending because Mark Wade and Garney got back on the Captain America book. I have it collected in this volume. I also have the original issues. I, they, I'm assuming they're going to probably do an epic collection of these eventually, but for now, if you could find this uh, collection to serve and protect, you will get the return of Mark Wade and Rod Gardney's Captain America, and it was just as awesome as it was before they took it away from him. So they did the smart thing. They did the right thing. They, they realized they made a horrible mistake, wasted a ton of money, created a terrible Captain America comic book, but then they put the guys who were originally, before Liefeld, doing a really good job and gave the job back to them. And 
we got some great Captain America comics. So that's the story of Liefeld's terrible Captain America. Okay, guys, I will catch you next time.